Greetings and blessed day to you once again, people of God. It's the revelator once again, and hoping you have had a great marvelous week in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, before we get into today's presentation, I just want to give you a brief recap of what we covered last time. Last time, we focused on the sex demons, and inside the sex demons, we exposed quite a number of sexual demons that are affiliated with the bad habits and the addictions of sexual immorality now today we want to focus on yet another mystery in the spirit and today we want to focus on the hell cell the hell cells and inside the hell cells we are going to be focusing on the prison of our death or the Hades prison so that you may understand that there is a prison there is a place which is located in the underworld and this place is a prison cell where lucifer has captivated the souls of god in the spirit those that have departed from this life before they repented i explained it in my previous presentation where i explained about hell where i exposed the territory and the platform the place that is called hell which is not in this realm and in this dimension explained how lucifer has captivated many souls and arrested many souls even those that are still walking on this earthly platform and surface so child of god i need the best of your attention the best of your participation, your availability, the availability of your spirit is once again, our Lord Jesus Christ is going to be ministering. Let's go to the book of First Peter chapter 3, verse 17. And it reads, For it is better if the will of God be so, that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. For Christ is also once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might be bring us to God, being put to death in the, in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Now, I need you to understand that the book of Peter here is explaining about how Christ dies not in the Spirit, but he dies in the flesh meaning that he continued to live in the spirit even within those three days that we believe that he was dead for three days he was dead in the flesh and while is this body was inside the tomb his spirit continued living and this is the mystery that the scripture then says by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison now how is that possible how did he go and preach unto the spirits in prison and which prison while is his flesh was inside the tomb it means he went down deep to hell and at this where he went and broke into the territory of the devil and started ministering unto the spirits. Not only did he minister unto the spirits, but he delivered the spirits that had been led into captivity by Lucifer the devil. I'm talking about the spirits that have been subjected to hell. The spirits that had deceased during the times of old, way before the Messiah had come into the New Testament. I'm talking about the spirit that loiter and wander in hell. And Christ went there. It was part of his mission. It was part of his death. It was part of the resemblance of the cross that he goes underneath to deliver the souls that had been captivated in hell. Child of God, I want you to know that there is a place that is located underneath the world. A place where many souls have been captivated even the souls of people that are walking on this earth 
the souls of those that have sold their souls to the devil, thinking that they have the good life, thinking that they have all that they need in this life, not knowing that their lives have been trapped inside the hell cells. There is a hell in a cell, and a cell deep down in hell. And Jesus goes deep down during the three-day mystery. I explained about the three-day mystery on Easter, where I presented a multiple number of presentations. That's where I explained the three-day mystery in which Jesus goes deep down to hell and he preaches to the lost souls and the captivated souls which had been imprisoned by Lucifer the devil. Even some that ministered the gospel that had been trapped by Lucifer. In the book of Jude, we read about the body of Moses being wrestled for by angel Michael and Lucifer the devil. Why? Because before Moses departed into another realm, he had to beg and that Beckley concerned the Beckley that he did not accomplish, which was to enter into Canaan. And inside that Beckley, there was a fault. And that fault was a mystery which gave the devil the mandate to wrestle for Moses' body. Why? Because the devil wanted to trap the Mo Moses' body inside the pit. I'm going to be explaining about this pit so that you understand that this very same pit is the very same pit where Lucifer himself is going to be bound for years. And Christ preaches to the lost captives deep down in hell and Hades, a prison that actually exists in the underworld. Let's go to the book of Acts chapter 12, verse 3 where I'm going to read a passage that describes a place in which Peter is bound and while he is held hostage. And though it was a physical place, but it resembled the terrain or the place that is called the hell in a cell. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also, after killing James, and this was Herod the king. Then were the days of the unleavened bread. These were also the same days that our Lord Jesus Christ was persecuted and afflicted. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison. And I want you to know that in the physical, this is a physical prison, but you are going to understand that this was not a physical prison though it appeared to be a physical prison, and delivered Peter to four quarters. When he's talking about four quarters of a prison guarded by soldiers, he's talking about four wings where you actually have to enter from one gate to the other, to the next gate, as you are led to the hell in a cell. When we talk about hell, we are talking about a prison. When we talk about a cell, we are talking about a prison cell inside hell. And Peter is led into four quaternions of soldiers. And the four quaternions of soldiers are prison cells inside prison. We are talking about a hell in a cell. And Peter is bound in one of the prison, which was the last quarter of the prison. Peter therefore was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Meaning that while Peter was inside this prison, the church was left behind praying for Peter who had been arrested. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Not only was Peter bound in a cell, but inside that prison, which resembled a hell in a cell, Peter was also guarded by two soldiers who bound him with the two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. 
Not only after entering the four quarters of the prison, entering into one bar and crossing to the next cell and into the next prison, there was also soldiers that were guarding Peter. And he was also chained while he's inside that prison. We are talking about captivity that leads you into being a captive. And while you are a captive inside that prison, you are inside a hell in a cell. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him at night, and a light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise quickly. Now, I need you to understand something, child of God. Peter is inside prison, a prison that you yourself believe that this is a physical prison. And why is the Peter is inside that prison. The scripture says an angel of the Lord, which is a spirit form, enters that prison. But there is a mystery here. Why is the angel has entered and reached where Peter is? The soldiers could not see that angel. And the angel smote Peter on the right side of his cheek. And the angel said unto him, Get thyself up and bind on thy singles. And so he did, and said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. The same way that he was called, when he was called by Christ, is the same way that the angel is calling him, that you have not finished the works of Jesus Christ. It's exactly what happens when you have not finished the works of Jesus Christ. No matter where the devil tries to lure you, no matter the devil tries to captivate your soul, the Lord will always find a way to deliver you. And he went out and followed him. And did not even believe that this was an angel that had come to rescue him. For Peter thought this was a vision. It means when this was happening, Peter assumed that this was a vision. Whilst this was actually happening, he thought he had fell into a trance. He thought he was seeing a vision. When they were past the first and second word, I'm talking about the cell inside a hell. I'm talking about the hell cells. I'm talking about the prison deep down in Hades. When you go down to the prison in Hades, you go through the gates of hell. You go through the past the first gate. I'm now exposing hell, child of God, as you listen to the revelation expertise of the holy spirit you go through the first gate and you go through the second gate and you go through the third gate and there is the last gate of salvation so we are talking about the four gates but we are talking about the three entry gates which caused jesus to be down there for three days before he resurrected on the third day and peter is being led through the first word which is a prison which is located on this realm in the physical but as peter is being delivered out of the prison of hades he is being delivered his soul he is being delivered his spirit out of the hell inside a cell the hell in a cell exists i need you to understand that if you have watched the wrestling there is a match that they call a hell in a cell and you think the wrestling that will be happening there while it's there will be inside a cage is just entertainment it's not just entertainment they are, they are resembling they are signifying a place that is called a hell in a cell a prison that is deep down in the ages and peter goes through the first word the second word and they came in unto the iron gate the iron gate represents a place that locates the final gate that leads into the city which is the holy city and peter is delivered out of the hell inside a cell from deep down in hades and they passed and entered into the street now i need you to understand that the people at the church are still praying and peter has been arrested but there's no way that they can ever believe that Peter can escape such a prison. And Peter is knocking at the door. And while this Peter is knocking at the door, they do not believe that this is Peter that has come. It's the same thing that happened 
when Jesus had resurrected after the three-day mystery, he appears in the midst of his disciples when Thomas is not there. Then he appears after seven days when Thomas is now there. And he has to allow Thomas to thrust his finger through the holes that were pierced by the long inch nails so that Thomas believes that Jesus, the Lord, the Christ, the Savior, is actually resurrected. I need to take you into the book of Jonah so that I conclude and confirm so that you understand that Jonah, when he was swallowed by the fish, he was not just in the belly of the fish, but he was in the belly of hell. He was deep down in Hades, inside the prison. I explained partly about this prison in the underworld presentation. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord in the book of Jonah chapter 2 verse 1. Jonah has already volunteered to be sacrificed and the men that were inside the ship, they throw him into the sea. And Jonah is swallowed by a whale, a fish, a shark that appears from Norway. And while he was in the shark, Jonah faints. I'm going to be reading that passage so that I give you this evidence in the spirit. And Jonah prayed unto the Lord, his God, out of the fish's belly. He's no longer in the fish's belly. He is now deep down in hell, inside the prison cell, deep down in the hell in a cell. And he said, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord and hate me. Out of the belly of hell I cried. He's testifying about things that happened there. Now testifying unto the church. And the Lord heard my voice. For you had cast me deep in the midst of the seas. And the floods come past me. And all thy pillows and all thy waves passed over me. Then I said unto myself, This is Jonah narrating what happened. I'm cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look towards the holy temple. The waters compassed me about even to the soul. Why would he talk about the waters compassing him even unto the soul? You remember a scripture in which Jesus says, as Jonah was in the belly of hell, so shall the son of man for three days. He was talking about how Jonah was trapped deep down there, deep in the prison cell of her death, the hell in a cell, the, the depth closed me around about the weeds were wrapped about my head i went down to the bottom place of the pit in the bottom mountains the earth with a bars why would you talk about the earth with a bars he's talking he's talking about the iron bars the prison bars the hell in a cell was about me forever yet you brought up my life out from corruption and jonah is thanking the lord after being delivered out of the hell in a cell. Let me take you to the book of Revelation chapter 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand, and laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent which is the devil, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up. Which pit is that one, child of God? The hell in a cell. Leprosodemosita. I want to pray for you right now in the spirit so that you are delivered out of the hell in a cell as you are praying as the holy spirit is ministering unto you Liprosodemosita, Jacosepracosita, be delivered out of this prison cell be delivered out of hell in a cell in the name of jesus jesus is delivering you out of the hell out of the wrath of the cell in hell out of the prison hades in the name of jesus